What is up, Pyromaniacs? Pyro Stacy here. We are back in the world of Horizons. It has been a little while, but we are back. And today, we are finally going to make some, some pretty strong progress towards fixing the farm. Um, you guys can't see it, but I've already got a bunch of stuff upstairs. I'll show you guys how we're going to hook that up here in a minute. Uh, we do have an item vacuum here, which we are going to use to produce a... Uh, a <laughs> we're going to use to suck all the things that we're going to blow over. Oh, Jesus. Um, and we're going to use that to, to automate our farm. But uh, one of the things we need before then is we need to make one more Tesseract, I believe, just for shits and giggles, um, because we need to have the ability to uh, transfer some stuff from one location to another a little bit easier than it would be otherwise. So we're going to go ahead and make this. Um, we're working on the Enderium blend right here, which you can see right there, which is being an asshole to me for some reason. Put that there, and that should give me Enderian Blend. Yes, it does. These little buckets right here, they're just melted down Ender Eyes, or Ender Pearls, not Eyes, Ender Pearls. Um, and we'll be turning these guys with the Pyroethium Dust here in just a second. Uh, is that going to pop all out? Yeah, it is. There we go. I'll uh, we'll put another six through there. Go ahead and reload these. Man, the only thing I hate about this is... And it always drives me nuts. What is it about Minecraft that will all... Oh, we got a new sub. Zalimthor. Zalimthor, brand new sub. Welcome to the channel, sir. High five to you. Thank you for your sub. I do appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Let's give Zalimthor a nice, warm, pyromaniac welcome. Um, and we're going to actually give you some of Sirish's used stitches. So... When she's done with them, they're all Ouch. yours. <laughs> Anyways, what like I was complaining about, uh, I, I never understood why buckets won't stack. They'll let us stack normal buckets, but as soon as you put a liquid in them, I mean, I understand from a from a rational perspective why it works that way. I just, you know, we are talking about a video game here. It doesn't always have to work. Really, there it goes. You don't always have to work the way things would work in real life. So, just saying. It would be nice to be able to stack liquid buckets. <clears throat> just saying. Just saying. Of course, then I guess, you know, an argument could be made, well, then we wouldn't need tanks and a few other things. So, fuck it, I don't know. What, what does Pyro know about mods and balance and all that stuff? So, we're going to go ahead and grind up this uh, Perithium dust, which is pretty easy. It's just sulfur, coal, redstone, and blaze powders, all of which we have in massive abundance. Uh, that's going to produce all of those for us. Uh, I do want to show you guys a couple more things real quick. Um, you can see right down here we have a resonant energy cell energy cube. Uh, this is the cube. The other cube we had, we have two of these. <clears throat> this is the second one. Uh, all you do is you take this one and surround it in these little things right here and it upgrades. I'll even go ahead and show you. This is a really cool feature though, by the way. All right, you can see right now this is at 10 million, okay? Well, it's at 9,999,000 and change. Uh, we're gonna pop that out and come over here real quick. And usually when you do this type of stuff, um, it loses its juice, which kind of sucks balls. But right here, bam. You can see we now have a resonant energy cell and it's maintained its juice. We come back, put it back down. It starts charging up again. You can see it's loading back up from up there with a new 5,000 limit. Um, and it can send and receive a 2k a pop. So uh, we've got that going, <clears throat> both of those. That's the top end cell as far as I know. Um, I may be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure I'm not though. Pretty sure I'm not. All right, so we have taught the machine how to make a Tesseract. It's already made one for us. Let's go ahead and pull out some more Ender Pearls. Uh, we are getting a little bit low on there. Uh, we're gonna have to make some more, um, what do you call them? I need to pull that out real quick. We're gonna need to make some more uh, ender plants so we can keep those growing. Um, once we get this automated, and today we're just gonna basically be doing a proof of concept. I've never done this before, so it may take me a little while to get it, uh, get my head around it. And then once my head's got it figured out, then we can kind of optimize it a little bit. So today it's gonna be, it's gonna be nasty. It's gonna be sloppy. It's it's not really gonna it's not really gonna work all that well, but it is gonna function, and that's basically the. The hope. I'm hoping to get it working so we can kick it back here and uh, just enjoy the fruits of our tree labor. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put this back in here. Uh, I forgot about this process earlier today and kind of look like a dummy. 
Uh, you still got one more step you got to do before you can finish it off. And now we have our Tesseract. There we go. Perfect. Let's go ahead and wrench him off. Um, we do have our item vacuum, which hopefully will be sufficient. We have our chest, which I'm going to use uh, just for the moment. Uh, I probably will. Because I, I don't think I can use it with a Tesseract right off the bat. Um, I don't think I can just suck from the item vacuum into the Tesseract. That would be really cool if I could. We will give it a shot and see if it works, um, but I'm pretty sure it won't. Um, however, to test this um, is going to be a little bit awkward. Now, um, we do have everything processed through here, so we don't need this anymore. I'm going to temporarily take this down. Um, the reason why is because we also need this little magnetostatic engine here, and I don't really want to mess with disabling it for the current time. So what we're gonna do, uh, you can see there's a input output here. I do need to turn this sideways. Uh, reason I'm turning it, we'll just put it like that. Reason I'm putting it like that, uh, I want this chest right here to be able to store, um, actually no, that's not what I need, hang on. Well, der. There we go. Let me go ahead and break this. All right, so down there is the cube. What Jaded do now? Jaded's back. Oh, well, welcome back, Jaded. Um, okay, so we've got this on top of the Tesseract here because we're going to be transferring items through it. And I know from a Tesseract, a Tesseract can put, I believe, the last time I checked, which has been a while, into another side-by-side -side inventory. Um, I'm going to leave this right here. One more click and it'll go down, but I want to leave this inventory open so I can at least see what's going on inside of it. All right, let's TP back home. Do we have everything we need? I believe so. So we're going to head upstairs and see if this works. I'm going to show you guys the setup now. Keep in mind, I am far from a genius with rotary craft. Uh, thermal expansion is something I've been using for, I don't know, eight months, nine months now. So I'm very, I'm very secure in my knowledge of thermal expansion whereas with rotary craft uh, not very secure at all so this may uh, this may not work very well at all or it may work very well right out of the box um, oh god dang it okay so one of the other issues that drives me nuts about this is there it is these little books are everywhere all right so we need a fan and this may crash me. If it crashes me, we'll cycle back out. It's one of the annoying bugs that's going on right now with uh, with this book. I need to find the fan. Where are you? Please don't bug out. One of these next pages is going to crash if I go too far. Oh, please don't crash on me. I need to find the fan. Let's go just look for farming. Where is the farming? Farming is on page 11. 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, we're good. Here's the fan. All right, so the fan needs uh, a shit ton of power. A shit ton of power. The nice thing about this is the fan will actually kind of, this will actually kind of work in our, our favor. I'll show you why. All right, so what you can see right here, we've got a Tesseract set up right here. Uh, this Tesseract is hooked into our TDK farming setup. Uh, you can see right here that we are sending none, but we're receiving all. Uh, we don't want to receive fluids. Um, so fluid mode is blocked, item mode is blocked, and we only want to receive energy. Uh, reason why is we don't want the, the Tesseracts now getting confused since we're fixing to start using this one system to send multiple things. So right here, all at the moment, this is currently sending or receiving fuel, um, not fuel, energy receiving energy and receiving it well. Now, you guys can see that we've got a couple farms here going straight across. Uh, sorry, the frame rate is tanking just a bit. We're gonna go ahead and put the item vacuum, um, I'm gonna break that, break that. We're gonna put the item vacuum here. We're gonna put the inventory right here. Now, from what I understand with this thing, um, the way it works is it will suck anything in a certain radius, depending on how much power you put through it and it will put it immediately into an adjacent chest. So that's why you have to have that chest there. If you don't have an adjacent chest, it's just gonna store it in its own personal inventory right here. Um, okay, and then we wanna put the Tesseract. Uh, we're gonna use the Tesseract right here. Um, 
actually no we're gonna use the tesseract right here now this is this is the part that's gonna be a little iffy um, what I would like to do what I would like to do is just put the tesseract right here and then take immediately out of this inventory the problem is I don't think that works um, if it does outstanding so I'm gonna set this up to um, item mode we want it to send only fluid mode we want blocked and then we want it to receive energy okay receive hang on damn it item mode blocked item mode send only fluid mode blocked energy mode receive only so we're sending items we're receiving energy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our conduits right here nope yep take our conduits we're gonna slap that there so that, that connects and just so that we don't accidentally whoops so we don't accidentally touch the wrong or the side of the engine I don't think it really matters but just for my sake we're gonna go ahead and connect it like that now that's going to activate this little monster here we can see right here that this needs um, let's see needs 16,000 watts um, 8 plus power divided by 16,000 watts so we're gonna go ahead and put it at 16,381 which is we can just do like this a little bit come on oh there we go all right so we need 16,000 watts let's kick that up just a bit Go ahead and put it up at about 512 if it'll let us there we go there's 512 we need 16,000 watts uh we'll leave it we're gonna actually turn it up just a bit well let's try it right here let's see what happens at that 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 level we're gonna see i want to see how far it's gonna suck so let's throw something at it that we don't really need um let's do some of this pyroethium dust so we're gonna just throw this here and it is not pulling it as you can see it is not pulling it so we need this to be of course i don't think the engine is really turning either which is kind of odd um let me see i think this may only receive power from the back now that i think about it yeah you can see power is right there uh vacuum drums or right click it will screwdriver uh, horizontally adjacent to it except other vacuums required power huh I think it will only take power from the bottom now that I think about it because it doesn't seem to be taking any from here let me let me find out real quick this will let us know real easy we just slap it again and I need to clear this out so I can see the bottom no that should work. Hmm. That is very odd. How much power does it need? Yeah, 16,000 watts. Huh. Oh. Solid point. There it goes. Now we're working. Uh, did you connect it to TDK Power? Who said that? That is SF Wild Bill. Thank you, sir. You are the man, sir. All right, so let's see how far it'll grab. You can see it's grabbing from out here. It's grabbing from way over here. Um, and that's good. So it's storing in its internal inventory. That's how we want it. So let's go home system, and we're going to test something real quick. So this is our other test rack here. We've got this one. Uh, we're going to switch over here. Now for item configuration, item mode is receive only. So you can see right here that we are receiving items if items are coming. We are on TDK um, and it will receive anything and everything that comes in. I'm going to go ahead and disable fluids just for general principle. So since we aren't getting anything in this chest here, that means it's not working. It's not being able to take something directly from this inventory out, which I didn't expect it to. So we're going to go ahead and put a chest here, and hopefully it will spit to that chest. It should. And you can see right here, the item draws items and explores, and it will absorb them into its internal storage. To extract story XP, right click it with a screwdriver. The item vacuum can also suck items from inventories horizontally adjacent to it. Ah, so it doesn't kick it out. 
That doesn't kick it out. So that is going to be a little bit of a problem. So this will actually take items from a nearby chest. So if I put these in here, it's taking the items out of the chest, which you can see right here. So that's not gonna work for me either. So the question now is, can I take it and can I use item ducks to port it out and then port it in? So we're gonna do this like this. We're gonna put you just like that. We're sucking out of that inventory. We're putting into that inventory. And we're gonna put these brains right here. The brains have been removed. They're in here. And sadly, it does not look like we're getting anywhere on the other side, which is a real bummer. So I'm gonna to have to figure out why it's not pulling out because it is, I guess I could set up a redstone torch down there. That'd be the best way to make sure it sucked the dirt up. Let's check that real quick because if that's the issue, then we're fine. Let's go home, let's make one real fast. Redstone torch. It shouldn't need this, but it might. Okay, and let's put you right here. You see it's lit up now where before it was not. Oh, come on. Give me the... There we go. We're empty. Okay. So now we go back to the home system. And we should have something in the chest here. Beautiful! Now we just simply flip the switch. That's going to suck it out, hopefully. Oh, come on. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. There we go. Now it's sucking. So we've got the sucking part down. We are, we are, we are slurping like a professional. Let's head back to the, the farm. So now that we're slurping like professionals, which is where we everybody wants to be. Everybody wants to be a professional slurper. Um, is that dirt? Is that dirt? Yeah. We are going to go back and fill in the hole here real quick. I seriously doubt anything could actually fall into this hole. But on the, cha on the off chance that it does happen, I want to make sure that we're nice and sealed. Perfect. Okay. So these over here are the fans. Now I've shown you guys in a previous episode how fans work. Um, we are gonna go ahead and hook this into there. Let's make sure we are not sending items, not sending that, and we are receiving energy. Okay, so with this, we need to come up with how much wind it requires to knock all of the stuff off. So we're gonna start with uh, this one right here. Uh, the fan that this thing needs, I think is, I think the fan needs, let's see, we'll go to page 11, or is it 12? I think it's 12. No, it's 11. This thing needs, yeah, 2,000, 209,000 watts is the max. So since we're in the middle, we're going to go ahead and do this one right here first. So let's go ahead and do, we're going to jack this up to 512. Come on. We having problems again. We are receiving power, receiving energy. We are on the TDK. And for whatever reason, this disabled power sometimes doesn't work. Okay, how about now? You gonna let me make some adjustments now? There we go. Turn it up. We're at 512. Kicking up the speed a bit. We gotta get that up a lot higher. We need 209,000 watts. We're at 65,000 watts. Come on. There we go. Now that should start blowing. You can see things are now being blown. For whatever reason, it's lagging out a bit. But you can see all these things are now starting to slide. They're now starting to slide. Now the good news, as you can see, it has slid all the way across. So let's go ahead and do it for the next line. I'm going to do it for this one right here. Now I want to check real quick and see where we're at. We're at, uh, which one is it? 512, 512. That's, uh, that's a little higher than we need it to be, but that's fine. Wow, it's blowing a 3x3 three three area. I didn't know it did 3x3. Three three. Okay. That's actually not so bad. 512. Come on. 512. And 512. There we go. That's going to blow that one on down. And we're going to come over here to this one. And we'll do 512, 512. Come on now. 
I hate the interfaces on these because they just it takes so long for them to flip. 256, and then 512, and then 512. There we go. Alright, let's move on down here. Okay, all these blocks are now being blown. Or should be being blown. Does look like some of them are not quite making it. You can see all the stuff is pouring into the setup. Look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is an automated farm. And the really nice thing about this is we have the anonymous activators underneath. So you can see all the stuff is just regrowing incredibly quickly. Now the nice thing about it, again, is the fact that I only need three of these to handle all of these rows. So we'll be able to set up the other engines over there. Now the only concern I have is, as you can see, some of the stuff isn't quite making it for some reason. Uh, we've got some of the stuff. I, I don't know if this is server lag. We're probably not doing so well on the server here. Uh, well, we got 19 TPS. We're not doing too bad. It could be just graphical glitches. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Either way, this is an automated farm. It will auto replace. It will auto regrow. All I need to do now is make sure that I've got all of the autonomous activators down below. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add another one right here and then another one right here and we will have every single item and component that we need for the game uh, running in this system and it should keep everything uh, rocking and rolling. Let's head back to base real quick. Um, this one I believe is is iron. I think this is iron. Let's see. Can it show me the setup here. Pretty sure this is... Oh, that's 10. Whoa! Whoa, it blows me too. Oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Now I need my hoe. I gotta get my hoe. I think I just fucked up the ground. I gotta see if that will fix those two pieces there. I don't think it will. I'm curious though now. So this is 10. Um, I'll come back and check that in a minute. Let's go home base. We should be able to... Oh, sorry. Home system. Uh, we come over here. We type in 10. And you can see we're at 312 and growing. And this is just going to get bigger and bigger, or it should, hopefully. Let's see, that's essences. Let's just look at essences. That should allow us to see uh, globally. So we've got coal essences at 136, uh, 370, yep, 137, 78. That should be going up soon. That's a 139. You can see these are kind of just raising up slowly. So hopefully we're not getting too much waste with this. It's quite possible that we could have some issues with uh, with some of the transparency and some of the blowing because of the other setups. Uh, I'm gonna head back up real quick with the hoe and see if it will fix, let's see, back, that's gonna take me to other place, isn't it? Yeah, oh well, that's where I needed to be anyway. We're gonna head upstairs real quick and we're gonna see if uh, the ripping out of those two seeds had uh, by chance actually fixed it. Because once, uh, usually when something is, uh, is is no longer tilled ground, then the machine's not smart enough to retill the ground and replant it. So I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. We'll check it. We'll check it. Let's run back over real quick. Now, what we're going to want to set up now is, you know, we're going to want to get iron up here, gold, tin, copper all of the materials. Um, it does take a while to get all these, but now that it's automated, it shouldn't be bad. And it replanted. You can see right here it replanted. So the system is actually smart enough to turn non-tilled soil back into tilled soil before it moves it. Now, granted, this is gonna be kind of an expensive system power-wise, but it's not too bad. I'm just trying to pick all this stuff up as I move across. I'm not sure if that stuff's even actually there. It may just be a graphics glitch. I want to check down here and see how the inventory is holding up. God dang, look at that. You can just see all of this stuff flying in. I'm going to try and get around here without picking this stuff up. And see if I can get into... I just want to watch the inventory if I can. Yeah, you can see it's picking up pretty quick. It's not too shabby, man. Not too shabby. So we got coal, Christmas essences, coal essences, dye essences. We'll basically have every kind of dye we could possibly want here soon. So, anyways, 
that is our automated crops and our automated farm using rotary craft it does require a lot of power but not too hard to do if you guys have any questions about this setup please feel free to leave them in the comment section below as always if you like this video make sure you slap that like button don't forget to subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next clip